Okay, good morning, everyone. This morning we're going to be in Romans chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. Let me pray for our time together, and we'll dive right into the scriptures. Father, would you please give us wisdom and understanding this morning as we come to your word? Father, we don't want to be guilty of being hearers of your word and not doers. So would you cause your word to be effective in our lives? Give us understanding so that we can do and know what we ought to do, Father. And give us the ability to follow through with what we have read about. We love you, and it's in Christ, and we pray. Amen. Okay, so Romans 2, 12 through 13 says this. For all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. So whenever we read about the law here, we see it come up over and over again in this verse. The law, the law, the law, the law, the law, the law. So that is six occurrences. When it's talking about this, it's talking about specifically God's commands in Scripture. And when Paul wrote this to the Romans, he's envisioning the commands in the Old Testament. He's talking about the law of Moses, which can be found in the first five books of the Bible. So these laws were given to Israel to show them how they are to relate with God, how they were to treat one another, their neighbors, their brothers and sisters. And Jesus, in the New Testament, he summarizes the whole law in a command, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. So this law explained to Israel how they were to act as God's people. It was to set them apart among all the nations. So all the nations, they weren't gifted the law. They could go and learn of it and find out about it, but Israel was different in that God chose Israel to receive this. He handed it down through Moses to the people as they are wandering in the wilderness and heading towards the promised land. And he chose Israel to have the law as they would move into Canaan. But here's something that happened. Israel, in their relationship to God through the law, began to treat the law robotically. They weren't obeying the law so that they could have a good relationship with the Lord, they were obeying the law for their own benefit. They would find loopholes and find ways to manipulate what the law said in order to still get what they wanted while technically being obedient to the Lord. But in that, they were actually being disobedient to the Lord. So they had the law and thought that they were upholding it And God is exposing that those who had the law were actually sinning under the law. So we looked at in this last session about how God in his judgment is a fair judge. There's going to be wrath for the Jew first and also the Greek because the Jews had the law. God shows no partiality in this. And so now here in verse 12, we have the beginning of an explanation of how God shows no partiality. And here's what we see. There's two groups in in vision here. One, there is a group who have sinned without the law. And then second, there's a group who has sinned under the law. The group who has sinned under the law, that's the Jews. They know God's righteous decrees. It has been handed down to them specifically. Because they know what is right and what is wrong, they are going to be judged when they do what is wrong. But then we have this other group here, this group who has sinned without the law. This would be referring to the Greeks or the Gentiles. But notice what it says here. Both groups are going to perish and be judged. The Jews are going to be judged by the law that's in their hands. The Gentiles are still going to be judged and perish 
And I know that at this point, some of us may say, well, that doesn't seem fair. How can they be judged about doing something they didn't know they were supposed to avoid or something of that effect? And Paul is going to address that actually pretty soon here in Romans. So we're not going to address that in this session. This idea here in verse 12 about those who have sinned without the law perishing, we're going to explain and unpack that further as we continue to go through chapter 2. But the important thing to see here is that Neither of these groups have an excuse, especially the Jews who have the law. They don't have an excuse, but even the ones that don't have the law. Sin is what brings about judgment and perishing, whether you have the written law in your hands or not. And we'll address that a little bit why later. So he continues here in 13. It's not the hearers who are righteous, but the doers. This describes all Jews, and really it describes all Christians as well. It's not the hearers who are righteous, but the doers who will be justified. It's interesting to point out here that there's two different words used. It talks about the hearers are not righteous. And you would expect it to say, but the doers who are righteous, but it doesn't. It says the doers who will be justified. So there's a group of people who hear, and the temptation is to think, because I've heard and I know something of God, that means that I know God. But Jesus speaks a little bit to this. There's an account here in Luke 8, 20 and 21. And he, Jesus, was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. So for Jesus, family here, my mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. So to relate to Jesus here involves both hearing and doing. To say that you know Jesus or that you have a relationship with God is to say, I hear what he says, I do what he says. That's the relationship here. We see this idea also unpacked in the book of James 1, 22 through 25. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. So the command here is to be doers, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So if you know the law, hear the law, you know what is good and right, but do not do it, you deceive yourself into thinking that everything is okay when it's not. The purpose of the law that we see here in this analogy, the one who is a hearer and not a doer, is like one who looks into a mirror and he forgets what he was like and he walks away doing nothing. But then there's one who looks into the law, and as he looks into the law, he sees himself in things that are not right and makes an adjustment because of that. This is the one who is a doer and not a hearer. So tying all this back to Romans, all of us have sinned, whether we do not have the law or we do have the law. We've all sinned. And so we are all unrighteous. The ones who hear the law and don't act on it are not righteous. If every person on this planet had a copy of the scriptures and of God's laws and precepts and commands, there would still be none righteous. And that's why there's this different choice here. The doers of the law. Here's what happens to them. They are 
justified. This is the hope for every Christian. That in the midst of our sin, God has justified us. Here in the book of Romans, this is a condemnation against those Jews who have the law, and they hear, and they say, well, I'm a Jew, but then they don't do what God says. He says, you will not be justified. But we can also, as Christians, take this as a warning. May we not be hearers who do not do. We talked about already in Romans, God has saved us through faith, not through our doing the law, in our works. He saved us through faith, but in that faith, we are saved to good works. May we not turn to God in faith, hear the message of the gospel, and respond and think, God doesn't expect me to do, and I don't have to do. If that's your mindset, you are one of these hearers who have sinned under the law and will not be justified and not be declared righteous. May we hear the word of God and respond in faith and obedience. May we go to God's word and seek him and find him when we search for him with all of our hearts. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you've given us your law in the Old Testament, and even commands in the New Testament for us to know what sin is, for us to know what your holiness is, what your righteousness is, what your goodness is. Father, I know that I don't personally reflect that like I ought to. I understand that I have sin, that I have been both one who sinned apart from the law and one who has sinned under the law. But Father, I thank you that you have made a way for me to be justified. For everyone else listening to this video, Father, you have made a way for us to be justified, and that's through your Son, Jesus Christ. So as your children, Father, would you help us to continue to do what you've commanded us to do, not being merely a hearer of your word, one who hears the gospel and rejoices, but then does not live for the gospel. Do not let that be us. Let us be doers, Father, who do what you command. We love you. It's in Christ's name we pray these things. Amen.